The information provided on LifeInterruptedRadio.com is for educational purposes only. Welcome back, everyone, to the Autoimmune Hour on Life Interrupted Radio. I'm your host, Sharon Saylor from SharonSaylor.com, and today we're here with Dr. Nasha Winters, and she's the CEO of Optimal Terrain and the author of the brand new book called The Metabolic Approach to Cancer, as well as so many other things. She's, uh, I just love her because she is one of those people that look at you as a whole person <laughs> and says, how are we going to make your health work here? You know, let's bring you back into this healthy place, looking at everything from our lifestyle, what, you know, where we are emotionally, mentally, socially, physically, environmentally, all of that. That's what I love. And I'm sad to say it's hard to find. So I'm so thrilled that she is an advocate of the autoimmune hour here that, that was sharing with us. And today we're talking about diet all the myths around it. And we were just talking about protein. I got so excited. I heard the word butter. <laughs> my grandmother, my grandmother, turkey, or not, uh, bacon fat and butter. And um, I know not to go overboard like she did, but just the idea that I could go to have a little taste of butter was exciting. Um, which <laughs> we, We're just blowing through our time together as we always do, Nisha. <laughs> One of the th another question I have on my list, I want to make sure we get to them all. There's another fad, I guess, out there, and I've tried it. And actually, shockingly enough, I got to the point where I could drink it, um, not straight, diluted with water. But this idea of the acid alkaline diet, and not to name names, but I am going to apple cider vinegar. <laughs> um, it's so it's so. Uh, you have to get so used to it. Maybe it is good for you. <laughs> I don't know. But let's talk about this idea of can we change the pH of our body and does it even matter? So first of all, I, this is such a good question because we do, uh, um, my, my co-author, Jess Higgins Kelly, and I try and debunk this myth of, of pushing the body into an alkaline state. The only, first of all, our body, different tissues of our body at different times of the day and night need to have a different level of acidity and alkalinity to be at its most efficient and effective, okay? So there's no like all the body needs to be alkaline or all the body needs to be acidic. That's a myth in and of itself. And even if you push yourself too hard with like going overzealous with a alkaline water or something, you can actually cause damage there. So alkalosis <laughs> is just as bad as acidosis. You can die on either end of that spectrum. So be careful, right? But here's the reality is that it is very hard to push yourself in either direction, especially into the alkaline, because we have so many inner uh, signals that are telling, oops, the, the pH is too high or too low, and it's constantly adjusting to that equilibrium. This is the amazing thing about our body. It's I just love it. It's the most amazing healing machine. Once we give it the right things to deal with. So you just nailed it because that's what lends itself. When people are talking about this, what we're really trying to do in our body at all times is restore the rhythm, bring back homeostasis and balance. And you can't do that if you're staying up all hours of the night or you have a, you know, you're drenched in EMFs and you're um, living on soda pop and um, gluten-free crackers and you're never outside and you don't, you don't exercise ever. That is dangerous. And that is what is acidifying your tissues. Okay. So when the mitochondria get damaged from diet and lifestyle issues and from poisons from certain medications or things in our environment or our food system, what that does is they get stressed and they dump these byproducts into the cytoplasm of the cell. And then that creates acidity around them, which then attracts more acidity. So when people say acid alkaline, it's not that we're acidic first, it's a, it's a secondary effect of what we've done to our body. Right. So the way to bring back balance instead of trying to force a certain diet or bring a certain water in is to come back into balance in all things of your life and having a plant based diet with a lot of those leafy greens, all those cofactors and minerals that are so stabilizing and good quality, clean filtered water and time outdoors and fresh air and time in nature and exercise and good sleep and good love in your heart. That is making the cells happy and they're not dumping byproducts into the system. That is how you get to an acid alkaline balance in the body. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. And the apple cider vinegar thing, first of all, 
I love it. I'm a weirdo. I really like it. But those are things, again, our grandparents, they were the, all the ones doing the cod liver oil. They were all the ones like taking a swig of their bitters. They were the ones having their apple cider, you know, milling, making their own apple cider vinegar. These were the, our natural ferments in the West. It's our one, if you get a raw apple cider vinegar, that's about as natural probiotic as you can get. So it's not even so much about what it's doing with acidity or alkalinity. It's about what it's doing to stimulate enzymes. That's what it's mainly doing. Digestive enzymes. Okay. I like it now that I got used to it, but you know, it's one of those things you have to sort of like work your way into. <laughs> exactly. I always tell people to start with those um, uh, Bragg's organic apple cider vinegar drinks for limeade. That's got a little bit of stevia and lime and apple cider vinegar. It's like having a, it's like having a limeade. It's quite tasty. So it's a nice gateway drug for people who are trying to bring in some more probiotics and get their palate accustomed to doing that by itself, just a swig from your bottle. Yeah. I like the ginger one, by the way, the limeade. Ooh, the limeade's good, but I like the ginger one yeah. too. Well, we're, we're down to just about 10 minutes and I want to make sure I get through all my questions. So um, that, uh, and a couple other places that um, questions came up for you from your last visit was um, cooked or raw. You, you know, I mean, we're always looking at this idea of plant-based diet and a lot of uh, questions were around, look, I really, my gut just can't handle the raw. Is cooked okay? It is. And in fact, my husband, the biochemist, will tell you that some foods, some of the wonderful um, uh, plant chemicals that we need for healing need to be released with some heat. Okay. So definitely like the cruciferous family is done better with a little bit of heat and acidification with things like apple cider vinegar, a little bit of lime or li um, lemon to break up some of those oxalates. So that's a good one. Also all the raw kale and the raw spinach we've done that also created a lot of oxalate issues. And that's a real issue. People want to go read up on that. So acidify it, that breaks down the oxalate oxalates. Um, oh, really? then, so, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Time out. <laughs> because I, well, uh, telling on myself years ago, I had an oxalate kidney stone and I was told to stay off all the green vegetables, but that's not healthy. But right. if we were adding lemon to it while we're cooking it, I can get away with it. Absolutely. You can bring them awesome. back on. I know. Isn't that, well, cool? that that farmer I met at the farmer's market a few years ago when the kale was start, just starting to be a rage, I tried eating it. I thought I was going to die. And he said, <laughs> I saw him the next week and he said, no, no, you know, here, this is how you cook it. And he said lemon. Oh, I and love that. So I've been doing that and I didn't even know. Isn't that brilliant? So again, the biochemistry was there. We just, we have been doing it since the beginning of time because we kind of figured it out in nature. It's quite elegant. So that's a big one. And then from Chinese medicine and Ayurvedic medicine, the ancient medicines, they never did raw because most of us, if we're sick, we have a weak digestive system. Mm -hmm. Hippocrates says all disease begins in the gut. The ancient Ayurvedic doctors worked on the gut. The Chinese medicine practitioners work on the gut if you're ill. And so a raw food um, diet and someone who's compromised is a no-go in these ancient forms of medicine. In my world, depending again on the constitution, the health and vitality of the GI tract and the season and the temperature around them, I can get away with a lot of raw in the summer not in the winter. I even have my patients, if they're going to do raw green drinks, I have them add like hot water to it, right? Uh -huh. Warm it in the winter months. So you can still get those or cook them at better. Yep. Mix them in with some bone broth. That's your warmth there. So it's like having a nice little green bone broth soup. You'll make it more into a soup or a warmed beverage or add like you have that thing for ginger. That is so helpful. That adds some heat, some agni, some fire to make it more digestible for some of those foods. So if I have someone who's got any gut issues, any autoimmune issues, which all starts in the gut, maybe avoid the cold and raw unless you live in a really warm um, climate. Yeah. I want to go circle back around about something that you said, though, since we're talking about seasons and eating. Yeah. Now, where I live in the Pacific Northwest, I would never find a papaya unless it was brought in. Is it okay in the summer to eat a papaya, even though they're not natural to my habitat? You know, I mean, obviously we're all going to do that because they're delicious. I <laughs> love them. I love them. <laughs> ultimately, our microbiome, like our bodies don't know what to do with that because that's not really from our area. So the closer we eat seasonally and locally, we're also getting the microorganisms of our area, which is helping us deal with our environment, adapt to our environment better. It's like when people take pollen, local pollen, bee honey or whatnot, to help with their allergies. It's no different than eating food from the soil, from the terra 
around you. Now, if you're visiting, like I was just down in Mexico for two and a half months, I had some pineapple, I had some papaya, I had some mango because I was literally getting it off the trees right there, right? It wasn't being shipped for miles. Same thing, if you're visiting Hawaii, for the love of God, enjoy those things. But you know where I go, I love to go up to the Pacific Northwest and get all your berries. You yes. know? Oh yeah, berries. we've got the best berries. So that's where stick with what you have. And then when you're traveling to the places where those foods are more natural to that environment, enjoy them then and there. Yeah, so I can't even eat a strawberry that's not from the Pacific Northwest. I bet you got spoiled. <laughs> oh yeah, when I grew up there. Apples, apples and strawberries are the two things I said. Unless it was came from the somewhere in the northwest, I don't even want to know. It, it be, unless you got to guys got to taste a Pacific Northwest apple and a Pacific Northwest strawberry to know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Your strawberries are not supposed to be white on the inside. They, they are do. red all the way through. <laughs> now the smell, they're just like. Oh. So fragrant, yes, yes. Explode in your mouth. I just love them. Okay, so we've, we're, we're jumping everywhere, but I want to get in all these questions. And the other question I had is, um, there's a bunch of new water filters out there. Everything, you know, from the old pictures to now actually uh, desktop or uh, countertop type things to whole house water filters. Mm -hmm. um, I've got a water filter. I travel lots of places. Every place I have got a water filter like this. It's a countertop. I love it. It's got all these different filters. Mm -hmm. But the thing about it that I've always wondered is it takes so much out of the water. Mm -hmm. It is, do I, is that what, water so good that it, I mean, that it, ta it filters out basically everything <laughs> and they suggest adding minerals back. It's so clean. So yeah. what's that about? <laughs> It is, you know, again, kind of like the beginning of our conversation, we talked about eat organic, you know, or as they call it food. There used to be a time when we never had to worry about our water. But today, if you go on the environmental working group website, ewg.org, and you put in your zip code, you can find yeah. out exactly what's in your city water. Like my town. Sit down when you do that. <laughs> yes, yeah. Seven known carcinogens just in my town with 26 possible. Hmm. You know, like. <laughs> really have to filter your water today. And really because most filters, unless they take everything out, they're still leaving behind medication residues, heavy metal residues, radiation residues, um, fluoride residues, arsenic residues, unless they're really hardcore filters. So your fridge filter, your, um, what is the, the little Brita filter, those are doing nothing but pretty much taking out chlorine and maybe mm -hmm. a few microorganisms. Those aren't cutting it today, you guys. Those are not the big ones we're scared of anyway. We're scared of the stuff that it's not taking out. So the Berkey, I'm guessing that might be what you have for your countertop at home. Mm -hmm. That's a, um, a really good, you know, like any of that style is really good because it does take out everything. Now, if you're eating a really good diet that's local and seasonal and you don't overzealously rinse all of your food, you're going to get a lot of minerals just from the soil. Um, you're going to get, a, especially if you're eating a large amount, so you probably don't need to remineralize unless you start to show some frank deficiencies in your symptoms or on your labs or in your fingernails. Um, at that point, you could add in some minerals, okay, which okay. works. But that's where I love bone broth. Bone broth is, I mean, hello, what are our bones? They're just like a big concentrated pile of minerals. Okay. And well, so we can go on and on about that too, because I, I absolutely love bone broth. There's an amazing sis, two sisters run a, a little factory up where I live in Oregon. Um, but there again, I've gotten read studies about certain bone broths aren't getting the bones from the right place and you're getting heavy metals and all sorts of things that you shouldn't be getting in your bone broth. So be really careful. Very important. Thank you. Yeah. It's best to get them like we get them. We know our ranchers. We know our farmers. We know exactly where our food source comes from. We know where those bones are coming from and we know that they're pretty darn clean. Plus they get them third party tested pretty regularly to make sure that that's still the case. So it's good. And, and Nisha's hardcore. She makes it herself. I don't. I just go to the two <laughs> sisters. I tried it one time. I would do that too. <laughs> I tried it one time, and in all honesty, I, I, I sourced it. I mean, I was sure in the quality of everything I was doing, but I lifted it up. First off, it takes a long time, guys. If you've ever made it, it takes a long time. Honestly, though, I lifted it up, and there was just this little chicken foot hanging there, and I was like, no, I'm just going to go to the gals, and <laughs> this is not worth it to me. <laughs> Especially if you're a recovering vegetarian, which I have been. My husband has to make it and filter it, and then I drink it when it's nice and pretty and golden, and there's no... <laughs> 
or organs or anything other floaty <laughs> weird bits. It has yeah. to be sure for me. So I might uh, find your source as well. <laughs> I'll send you their name. They're awesome. And anyway, we're down to just three and a half minutes. This happens every time we get together. I swear, like I said, sisters from a different mother. But anyway, I, I want everybody to know how to get a hold of you because your work is just profound and life changing. Everybody, you follow her on social media and everything because the stuff she offers, you might be going, well, it sounds so simple, but cutting through everything that we hear, she's a truth teller, guys. So here. Tell us all about you, your book, everything that we need to know to get a hold of you. Well, I appreciate that. And you know, part of this journey is I've been on it for 27 years myself, trying to source and vet all of this information. So I wish I had me 27 years ago. So the book, The Metabolic Approach to Cancer that I co-authored with Jess Higgins Kelly, um, it came out last May. Um, that is a really great resource. Like you said, it could be anything in the label besides cancer. Um, because Oh really yeah, just insert any word, feeling crummy and it I it love that. <laughs> We're going to change it to that. Um, <laughs> you can find me and follow me on social media. Um, Jess and I have a Facebook page, The Metabolic Approach to Cancer, which we post a lot of relevant research and information that's kind of continuing the story of the book. I also have a Facebook page, The um, Optimal Terrain Consulting, which also is a way that you'll keep up with what I'm up to, all the events where I speak, et cetera. And then my website, optimalterrainconsulting.com, has hours and hours, if not probably days of you being able to hear all kinds of videos, podcasts, research, um, blogs, and things I've written because I'm constantly trying to share what we're learning. There's so much amazing information coming out in medicine right now. I feel very hopeful for where we can go in the future. Awesome. Awesome. It's just fantastic. Thank you so much. And I'm not going to let you get away until you tell us about those glasses. For those ah. listening to audio, she has these glasses on because we're doing video off for the show now too. And yeah. they're amp they're amber. They're great. These but are my daytime blue blockers. And then I have my nighttime blue blockers, which are a deep red um, that cuts out all the blue light. And that is how I can be in front of a screen my whole world is in front of a screen these days. And I have destroyed my vision in the last two years since this has happened. I've always had eagle hawk eyes in the last couple of years, I've needed readers. And so these little guys um, have even readers in them and cut the blue lenses off of, pardon me, my puppies just heard their pop. <laughs> <laughs> but this is where they cut off the blue light that's coming through the computer screen or any screen time for that matter. And it makes a huge difference of my eyes. I don't feel tired at the end of the day or no red eyes at the end of the day either. Awesome. awesome. Yeah. I love them. <laughs> we got to run. Technology. So. Yeah. Yeah. We'll talk. We'll get her back to talk more about that because I, I on my list here was also about environmental toxins, which light is one of those guys. And but we're out of time, like what always happens to us. Everyone, have a great weekend. Whatever your adventures, join me next here Friday night, seven p.m. Eastern time for another great show. And if you haven't joined the Transcribe Tribe yet, run over to LifeInterruptedRadio.com. Sign up for Transcribe Tribe. It'll open up. 165 plus episodes of transcripts. So if you want to go, said I just couldn't believe everything she said, run over there, get the transcript and get out your highlighter because you're going to need it. Anyway, <laughs> join me next week. Talk to you soon. And as always, enjoy. The information provided on lifeinterruptedradio.com is for educational purposes only. What you hear, read, and see on Life Interrupted Radio is based on experience only. The information presented here should never be used for any legal, diagnostic, or treatment purposes. Always seek sound legal, medical, and or professional advice regarding any problems, conditions, and any of the recommendations you see, hear, or read here on Life Interrupted Radio. You've been listening to Life Interrupted Radio. To learn more, listen to other shows, and gain free resources that can help empower your life, be sure to stop by LifeInterruptedRadio.com.